أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين خاتم النبيين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين أما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في محكم الكتاب المبين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما خلقت الجن والإنس إلا ليعبدون صنق الله العلي العظيم Dear respected viewers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to the fifth episode of the program Wisdom of Worship, where in which we discussed many attributes of Ibadah, Worship and in our previous program we discussed about controlling the nafs, controlling the soul and uh, the riwayas, the ahadith, the verses of the Qur'an relating to this topic and further on discussed about the Tawheed, the Oneness of God and the Prophethood, how these two pillars have to be together and we should not let go of these two. Today inshallah our topic of discussion is about the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the secrets of Qiyamah, the secrets of the Day of Judgment. The Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said Ana wa sa'atu kahatain meaning that me and Qiyamah are like two fingers Two fingers that are together, the Holy Prophet says, I and the Day of Judgment and Qiyamah are like two fingers together. I know what the Day of Judgment will be. The Prophet when he remembers, when always and always he remembers the Day of Judgment, his face turns pale, turns red. And people ask, the Holy Prophet وسلم, why does your face turn pale? Why does the, your face turn red? Then he urges the people that saying Ana wa sa'atu kahatain, meaning that me and Judgment Day, me and the Qiyamah are like two fingers together. We do not separate. Whenever I see my two fingers, I remember the Day of Judgment. I remember Qiyamah. Because there is no, there is no uh, difference between what I see cold and hot, I see both together. But to you people, you do not see that the Day of Judgment is in front of you. The fire of hell is seen, the blissful fruits of heaven are also seen. Qiyamah is a day when the Holy Prophet ﷺ explains that there will be a time where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals everything in front of your eyes whatever you have done in this life whenever you have done things in this life wherever you have done things in this life they have been placed in front of you and you on the day of judgment will witness everything Imam Ali salam also explains لَوْ كُشِفَ الْغِطَاءَ لَمَزْدَتْ يَقِينًا being in front of the veil or seeing the, the front of the veil and behind the veil has no difference for me because I see both as the same I see front and the back as the same meaning that Imam Ali salam, Ali ibn Abi Talib knows what is Qiyamah knows, knows what's going to happen on the Day of Judgment but when the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says Ana wa This is a different level He sees and he feels The day of judgment On the day of judgment You will realize that Whatever you kept within your hearts It will be revealed There will be groups On the day of judgment where they will resurrect blind, deaf, or people that cannot talk. Why? 
It's because that on earth when they were living they used to act in ways where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was not pleased with them. They used to witness, they used to look at things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was displeased with. They used to go to places where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade them to go to. They used to hear things on earth that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not want them to listen to or hear. But the level that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was, we can surely and certainly know for ourselves that we cannot attain that level. When the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ana wa sa'atu it meant that he knows in between the two fingers there is no difference. They are all one. They shall not depart from one another. And the Holy Prophet feels the two, the two waters. We, as human beings, can attain that level, can know that what the Holy Prophet ﷺ was trying to show us. There, there was a scholar, a very high esteemed scholar, Marhum Sadrul Mutahaleen. He said once, there have been people on this earth that he witnessed that when they sit in gatherings, they see people in front of, in front of them talking, but they're not talking as if they are talking normally. And they are talking fire. And that fire comes from their hearts, from their mouths. Why? is because what they did on earth, what they used to do and what they are doing. That is what? Backbiting, swearing, calling names, bad-mannered. All these are the attributes of a non-believer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made you believers, made you mu'mineen. So that you abstain from these attributes, from these bad characteristics. When that batin inside you, that inner self inside you, knows that you are backbiting, knows that you are swearing at one another, knows that you are becoming a bad person, bad mannered to other people, then know surely that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is displeased with you. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is displeased with you, then there is wrath upon you, there is punishment upon you. The Urafa have many attributes on earth. They see other people in different ways, they see other people in different sights. For example, Marhum, he saw other people in front of him sitting down and other people besides him, there were other, uh, other scholars too. But seeing in front of you fire when people are talking is two different things. And normally when me and you, everyone else, we talk about myself first, but if we reach a level that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, us, us, has given us a gift to know what other people are then we surely can say that we have reached a level that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted us but when we do not see anything in front of us just normally people talking then there is something within ourselves that we lack other people see that I see other things in front of people I see other people I see human beings but I don't see human beings, they are animals. Why? Because I see that their characteristics, their way of walking, their way of talking, their actions reflect the actions of uh, animals. If we contemplate upon what the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam has said, then surely we can attain a level Surely we can understand, surely we can come to a conclusion where it, it begins, your nafs, your soul begins to realize who we really are on this world. Maybe and surely we know that we cannot attain the level of what the Prophet ﷺ has said, but we, we can understand what he has said to us. And I was we might not grasp the actual meaning of this 
this quotation but we can at least say to ourselves if we attain a level by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we can say to ourselves that we know a secret of the day of judgment we can show ourselves that we are different people different people as in not appearance wise we do not look at appearances difference as in your batin your inner self knowing that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbid when he forbids you to do things you stay away from you refrain from these things when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this is wajib then you go towards it you do not step back and say oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't mean that it's wajib no we see that there are different stages in life there's youth there's adolescence there's when we become old but we all know that even when we are young we are we face different trials and tri- uh, trials and errors and even when we are elderly we find that there is trials and errors youth sometimes they are faced with illnesses but illnesses that go away when a person becomes old uh, grows the health deteriorates and he is um, stuck with diseases stuck with illnesses and that from the youth till the uh, till when you are on your deathbed you are all one you are human you are a human being but knowing that there is a day of judgment knowing that there is a day when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reveal everything to you knowing that the day there, there, there will become a day when your sins and your good deeds and your bad deeds will be weighed knowing that the day of judgment will come knowing that when you are on your deathbed you will go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knowing that inside your grave you will be faced with pressure to fishan a qabr humans are made in a way that sometimes they forget humans normally forget sometimes when you ask for something 10 minutes later or one hour later or 10, uh, or 10 days later you might forget something but humans are made in a way that if for example you memorize the Holy Quran it'll be in your head for decades but then when after a decade two decades the Quran is still in front of you the Quran is still in in, the, in your minds but you might forget something humans forget they are forgetful something big something that you've memorized the Holy Quran every verse that you memorize you were you were perfect at it you did not make no mistakes but one day you forgot a verse one day you forgot a page number one day you forgot a surah humans are like this but even if you look at it in the other way vice versa we can find the smallest of things that humans forget for example we might forget that where we are at the moment sometimes we might forget who we are with sometimes we might forget the smallest of the surahs sometimes we might forget that our 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 expenditures in this world on the day of judgment allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not ask you to translate a verse he will not ask you to tell him the story of miraj he will not tell to ask you to translate a book no he will ask you the simplest of the things that everyone at the moment everyone on this earth who is a believer knows the answer to but when that fishar comes when that pressure comes upon a person then he will forget for example in an interview you as an as a person who is going to an interview studies before you go to an interview 
You study about the company, you study about the school, you study about that specific place and you have everything in your mind but when you are in front of the interviewer you might forget something because at the end of the day we are humans even in an exam exam you prepare your exam you you, you know the book inside out you know every page you memorize every page but the time of the exam comes and you open the page you open your exam and it's asking you for something but you know that you, rem- you you know that you've read it but at that specific moment of time you forgot it's in the back of your head but you forgot we are humans this is humanity allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes to explain before he will not ask you difficult questions he will ask you very very simple questions and what are them questions on the day of judgment man rabbuk who is your lord man nabiyuk who is your prophet who is what is your book what is your religion? These are the questions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask. What direction is your qibla? These are very simple questions that me and you, everyone can answer straight away. But on the day of judgment, you will hesitate. You will not know. There will be a time where they say that you will be thrown into uh, the fire of hell for decades and decades and centuries but even then after all that time of punishment your Lord will ask you who is your Prophet they will reply by saying we know that our Prophet was a Prophet that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Quran to but they will not know his name that's how much they are forgetful that's how much they do not stick themselves to the Holy Prophet That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains in many parts of the Qur'an that remember me, remember me if you do not remember me then who are you living for? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in Surah Al-Ahzab Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Ya ayyuhal ladhina amunat thkuru rabbaka dhikran kathira O you who believe, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remember Him frequently. In another verse, in Surah Al-A'raf, verse number 205, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ فِي نَفْسِكَ تَضَرُّعًا وَخِيفَةً مِنْ دُونِ الْجَهْرِ مِنَ الْقَوْلِ وَالْغُدُوِّ وَالْأَسَالِ وَلَا تَكُنْ مِنَ الْغَافِلِينَ And remember your Lord within, humbly and fearing, and in a voice not in, not loud in the morning and in the evening and be not of the heedless ones we are told to pray the namaz pray our salat five times a day we are told that fasting is wajib upon us once a year for the whole month we are told that it's wajib upon us to perform the the the, the hajj once in our lifetime but are we ever told when to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is there a specific time that we should remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? No. Like the verse quotes in Surah Al Ahzab, remember him frequently, remember him all the time. His name should be on your tongue and his remembrance should be in your hearts. Not when you are vulnerable and not in when you are need or not when you are in need or when you are ill or when you need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most. No. You should remember him all the time. Because remembering him remembering him all the time will get you a certain level in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's eyes. Amir al Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib just before the battle of Badr the night before, he saw the army, he saw, his, he saw his army and they were fearing. Then he saw the Holy Prophet wasallam go towards a tree. And from the night till the morning, the Holy Prophet wasallam was praying. And they saw that the Prophet wasallam whenever 
he, he, lift, he lifted his hands for dua or he sat down his face turned red tahmaru wajnatahu why they asked him why they said that the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam replied by saying whenever i saw or whenever i turned red if you witnessed me turning red i remembered hellfire i remembered i saw hellfire in the Holy Quran, in Surah Takathar, it says, "Kalla lau ta'alamun ilm al-yaqin, la tarawun al-jahim." Nay, if you had known with a certain knowledge, you should most certainly have seen hell. So we all know that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has placed attributes within ourselves, and that wisdom of worship comes within ourselves, the inner self, the batin. If we human beings do forget, we have to try and remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the ultimate thing that we know and we read is inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon From Him we are placed in this earth and shall we return back to Him only This is what you have to remember all the time We do not possess anything we do not hold anything. All our mal, all our wealth, our health, our seeing, our sight, our touch, our feeling, everything is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Holy Prophet explains Ana wa Sa'atun Kahatain that his two fingers are stuck together, that he sees everything, he knows everything. And that is a lesson for us. The lessons from the Holy Prophet, from the A'imma, from the Ahlul Bayt wasalam, are all for us because if they are for us, we have to learn that kind of information from them we have to take on board what we hear and what we listen to especially in this holy month of Ramadan where we know that we are changing we know that there is a time in, 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 in the year where we can change and that is the holy month of Ramadan where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed you as a guest and he wants you to become better people speaking about myself first but there is a time and this is the time maybe in next year we are not able to witness the holy month of Ramadan this is our opportunity and opportunities come and go like clouds we have to take the opportunities. When we take the opportunities which are good, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be pleased with us. Inshallah, we in this holy month of Ramadan become the best of the people. And inshallah, we remember we remember the fire of hell. And we remember every time when we want to perform a sin or want to do a sin, we remember we have a second thought that not to perform it because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not be pleased with us inshallah we will continue our discussion in further episodes wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh